Hey everyone, it's been said that every quilt tells a story and it's so true. But I also believe every quilter has a story to tell. I wanted to hear about the people behind these wonderful quilts and thought you'd enjoy hearing about their lives also. Welcome to A Quilter's Life. Emily Bailey of Aunt Em's Quilt shares, I am creating a softer, warmer, more loving environment because those quilts will go out into the world and bless the lives of people. So that's why I do quilts. Isn't that what we need in our world? I'm so glad to be part of this community that blesses so many others. Be sure to check out Emily's website, AuntMsQuilts.com. Emily, thank you so much for being with me. Thank you. I'm excited to share my love of scrap quilting, modern scrap quilting, with you and your guests. It's great to have you here. Let's start at the beginning. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Ogden, Utah, and I was raised in Utah, just along the Wasatch Front is where I grew up. Do you have a special childhood memory? So probably the one that most relates with what I do now is My mom sewed my clothes. In fact, I didn't realize you could buy clothes already made until I was older. And I said to my mom, look, mom, you can buy these already made. But um, when I was about 10, she had entered a dress that she made for me in the state fair, and she won a sewing machine. And she gave that sewing machine to me. And my friend and I, at the time, she gave us some scraps. And I would guide the fabric through, and I would say, step on it, sister, and my friend would push the pedal, and we would sew stuff together. Nothing that would really look good because I barely even passed my junior high sewing class, but that is a fun childhood memory. Oh, fun. We'll be getting into your quilting business shortly, but was there any other employment you've had? Just like the high school employment, and I did do child care, and mostly I've just been a mom, not just a mom. I've enjoyed being a mom, and I have three sons and a daughter, and it's been an adventure. They've all grown, and when my daughter went to kindergarten is actually when I started my business. So, Okay. Besides quilting, are there other crafts that you do or have done? I do garden, and I'm trying to learn how to knit socks, but I haven't conquered that yet. Mm-hmm. I love yoga. I do yoga every day now, especially with the COVID thing going on. I need something to de-stress and kind of relax. So I don't know if that's a craft, but I think that's a hobby. Yeah. Yep. Are there any other hobbies? So, like I said, the gardening and trying to learn how to knit, but um Just spending time with my family is mostly what I like to do. I have one son who lives in the state, but the rest of my kids are outside, so I travel and see them. Mm -hmm. Who introduced you to quilting? So actually my mom, who gave me the sewing machine, had me make a quilt for what my dad would call my hopeless chest. Mm -hmm. So that was my first quilting experience. As a teenager and and a young adult, I thought I was going to be a fashion designer, and so I was mostly sewing clothes. But like I said, I had three boys, and they're not very fun to sew clothes for and kind of rebuild after I made them knickers and sailor suits. They don't wear those past the age of two, I'll tell you. <laughs> so I started, <laughs> I started quilting. Um, there was a group at my church, and... We did a block of the month, and that's kind of how I got into quilting. Neat. Can you describe your favorite quilt? I like to do a lot of improvisational kind of scrappy thing going on, or I like to draw from the past. Like my great-grandmother was a quilter, and all of my grandma's sisters were quilters. She said she's not 
she's the black sheep of the family. In fact, I've done a quilt based off of that um, because she didn't like quilting. So I have drawn from my great-grandmother's quilt and pulled her ideas and then made them modern. That's kind Mm -hmm. of... um, I don't know if that's a favorite. Like I said, I like to improv. I just like to grab a bin of scraps and just start sewing and see where it takes me. Cool. How about a favorite tool? So my favorite tool probably is my AccuQuilt Go Cutter, just because I really think cutting is a necessary evil (laughs) to do my projects. And that just allows me to get cutting done really, really fast. Um, My favorite dies, I like the strip dies, and I have a half square triangle die. Those are probably my favorite. But I use a lot of strips in my quilting and different ways to use strips. So that's just my favorite tool because it takes care of the necessary evil a lot faster. I don't have one of those. How does that work with the strips? So with the strips, I can cut, I have two and a half that finish at two and the one and a half that finish at the one. And I just put my scraps on there. It doesn't have to cover the whole area. I can't go more than six layers, but I can cut up to six layers. So like my half square triangle one, I can cut 36 half square triangle parts at one round through. Wow. So it goes really, yeah. It goes really fast, and it cuts all the dog ears off, so I'm not dealing with that. And that also makes it easy to line them up when you're sewing because the tip of the triangle doesn't wiggle and make things wonky or not right. So I really like that. And like I said, with the strips, I can just put different sizes in, and then I can put it through, and then I can sew like three together and turn it the other way and make nine patches really fast because it will cut them. Yeah. I really love that tool. I can't tell you how much I love that tool. (laughs) (laughs) So what is your favorite part of the process? I think designing is probably my favorite part of the process, watching how it comes together. Like I do design some in EQ, But a lot of the time, I just sew and throw it up onto my design wall and keep adding to it till I get a quilt and let it just evolve up on the design wall. But that is probably my favorite. Like one year for my birthday, I just made wonky trees and birds, Mm -hmm. and that became my enchanted forest pattern. But that was a present to me. It was just a way to relax and enjoy the day and just make blocks and throw them on the design wall and then they became a quilt. That sounds like a fun birthday. It was a great birthday and I love the quilt. (laughs) Neat. Tell me about your worst quilting experience. So I do machine quilt my own quilt on my domestic machine and I have quilted patterns and other pieces of fabric into my quilts because They were on the table, and they got worked in, and then I quilted them into the quilt. So I have a quilt pattern that has, like, a peace sign quilted into it. I had to unpick it out, but it has the stitch marks around. That was, and I do that way too often. Hmm. Now I try to make sure that I clean off the whole table. Because of my setup, I have a card table on one side to hold the quilt, and then a banquet table behind So I try to make sure that both of those tables are completely cleaned off before I start quilting so I don't quilt unwanted things into my quilt. Yeah. (laughs) Because you have to unpick them and it's a mess. And not any fun. That'll be a pain. Why do you make quilts? I make quilts because um, I know they bring comfort to people. When I was pregnant with my daughter, she's 20 now, um, I found out I had an autoimmune disease. And so I've been in an infusion lab and I've been around people who have cancer because of that. And I met this amazing woman through that experience. And she had a foundation and together 
I would make the quilty hugs and then she would give them out to cancer patients. Her thing was cancer sucks, so we need to do something to make it fun. So I have my quilty hugs that I do. And so um, I just know that they bring comfort. And I know that as I teach people to quilt and as I give patterns and things for quilters to use, because I know quilters are generous people, that Mm -hmm. I am creating a softer, warmer more loving environment because those quilts will go out into the world and bless the lives of people. So that's why I do quilts, because I just want the world to be a softer, more loving place. Thank you so much for that. Who do you usually make them for? I do make them for my family, but like I said, mostly I give my quilts away to cancer patients. People have asked to buy my quilts, but I don't sell them. I just I just give them to like Huntsman's, to Primary Children's Hospital, um, to a foundation that's called the Rack Pack that does um, breast cancer patients. So that's where my quilts go. Neat. Let's go on to, do you have a tip for me? My tip is relax and have fun. Don't worry that it's not perfect. I have an antique um, grandmother's flower garden. And the thing that I love most about this block is that the lady who did it, she probably thought it was a mistake and was kicking herself for it. But on the outer round, they're only one inch hexagons. But she ran out, so she used a different fabric, and that fabric is even pieced. And that just makes my heart just and it just makes me so happy. I love that. I love that she made do with what she had and she went forward and finished the quilt. And I think we can't stop ourselves from accomplishing a beautiful quilt just because there's one mistake or something that's not perfect. Just relax and have fun and your quilt will be loved. So Emily, how did you decide to name your quilt business? So my friends and family call me M, not Emily, and um, my nephews, they think it's really funny to do like the Wizard of Oz, Auntie M, Auntie M. (laughs) So I just felt that that had a nice mix with quilts, just the Aunt M kind of feel. I went with what they've named me and I just named my business Aunt M's Quilt, so. Have fun. When I read Aunt M's, I thought it gave a warm feeling. Yeah. My nephew's little joke just is a good thing, I guess. <laughs> so you started a quilting business. What was the process of going from making quilts yourself for the cancer patients and then starting in on the business? It was purely accident. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. It's part putting yourself out there and part when you put good things into the world, good things come back to you. Mm -hmm. So when my daughter went to kindergarten, I still wanted to be able to like go on field trips and volunteer in the classroom, but I also needed something to fill my time. I had been a mom for 16 years and that had been my main focus when my kids were little and at home. And so when she went to school, School, I went around to five or six quilt shops saying, okay, no, you sometimes quilt shops hire people to sew displays. And I, I'm like, would you be willing to pay me to do that? And I got rejected at like four or five shops. And at the last shop, they said, yeah. And so I started sewing displays for them. And then um, I made this quilt for... Um, a cancer patient thing, but I had done my math wrong, so my border was off, so I was trying to figure out a way to make it work and look good, and so I had shown the quilt shop owner, I had shown her what I did to fix it, and she's like, I like that, make that into a pattern, and we'll sell it. So that was my first pattern. It was totally an accident. There are no accidents, just opportunities for growth and learning, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> something I apply in my life. And so I started making patterns for her shop. And then my neighbor that lived up around the corner, 
she is the grandmother of Riley and the wife of Blake, of Riley Blake. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, at the time, they weren't Riley Blake. It was Christensen Wholesale. And she learned what I was doing, and she said, we're having a vendor's mall. Come and bring your patterns and see how they do. So I did that. And so I started getting into other shops and and growing that way. And then my sister, um, she designed scrapbooking fabric, but Moda picked her up for our scrapbooking paper. And Moda picked her up to um, design fabric. And Moda doesn't make projects and things for their designers of their fabric. They're in charge of that, and my sister doesn't sew. So she asked me to design some quilts using her fabric. So I did, and that ended up on the cover of McCall's magazine. So it just kind of snowballed and moved forward like that. It's just been putting myself out there and trying to help people out, and then things come back that help me to grow and learn. Cool. Right place, right time, huh? Yeah, yeah, and just not being afraid to act. Just move forward and know that maybe you'll fall on your face, but maybe good things will happen too. So how did you feel when you first saw one of the patterns you made, made by somebody else? Oh, I love that. I love to see when somebody makes one of my patterns and makes it their own. I love to see the colors and fabrics that they choose and how they make it different. It's so exciting and fulfilling to know that I was a starting spot that helped them to grow and become better. I see that you say you you offer laid-back classes with no quilt police. So tell me about yeah. your classes. I teach my various patterns, and I teach, like, improvisational, um, kind of scrappy patterns. And I try to let people know that when they're in the class, If it's not perfect the first time, it's okay. Don't rip it out unless it's just blaringly wrong. But just know that the next time you do it, it's going to get a little bit better, and the next time it will be a little bit better, and you'll continue to grow. So rather than waste time on picking, just move forward and know you're going to grow and get better each time. That's such good advice. Life is just a do-over. It's just fix your mistake and try again and then rinse and repeat. Yeah. You're just going to keep making mistakes. So rather than let them keep you stuck, just move forward and know that every time you do, you'll get better. It's like a baby learning how to walk. Like it's the falling down and getting back up each time that makes the baby's legs strong enough so that they can actually walk. So if we get up every time we fall down, we eventually will get strong enough and good enough to do what we're trying to do. Wow. Is there anything else you wanted to share with me? Um, Just thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Paula. You're welcome. Hope you enjoyed this episode of A Quilter's Life. You can find more stories on thequilterslife.com or subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts so each episode will be downloaded automatically. Thanks for listening.